We often wonder how two different species are closely related. But if you think about it, it doesn't seem difficult to explain, because there are many people around us who get along very well with their pets. Yet if a giant dog develops a friendship with an owl, it still sounds incredible. This was a Belgian Shepherd from the United States, and although it was fierce in appearance, it was gentle at heart. The dog's owner was a photographer and an animal lover. Therefore, most of its owner's time was dedicated to nature. In order to take good-looking landscape paintings, its owner often had to go out. Due to work, its owner's life circle was only nature, and as the only family member who was always with its owner, the sheepdog naturally followed its owner and came into contact with many creatures, including one owl. This owl and shepherd dog were very predestined. This woman lived in the forest, and there was an owl's nest in the big tree next to her house. After the woman and the sheepdog saw it, they went under the tree every day to observe the nest. The owl's eggs in the nest hadn't hatched yet, so the woman and the collie looked forward to the day the baby owl hatches every day. Finally one day all the owls hatched into little owls, only one egg did not break its shell. At that time, the mother owl moved to other places with other little owls, but left the unborn owl egg in the nest. The woman thought it was the mother owl, who would be able to take the unhatched egg away in the future so she stood by to protect it from other animals. However, after waiting for a long time, the mother owl did not go back. So the woman took the unhatched owl eggs home to take care of. In the days before the little owl hatched, the sheepdog stood by its side every day. It was thoughtful as if it were its child. The little owl finally broke out of its shell six days after it was brought home. The little owl used the collie as its mother and it also learned to suckle the puppies. The collie also took the little owl as its baby. So under the joint care of the woman and the shepherd dog, the little owl grew up healthy. So the woman had two pets. Other people's owners would buy a lot of playful toys for their pets, but for this collie and this little owl, those were not at all important. They wouldn't get bored because of each other's company. The collie had been guarding the little owl like a child. The little owl also enjoyed being protected by the sheepdog at all times. It would become maladaptive as soon as it was away from the collie. Even if sometimes the little owl was too tired to sleep, it slept standing on the head of the collie. The woman's home faced the landscape, which gave the two animals a place to play. The woman no longer needed to search for the beauty of nature, because the little owl and the shepherd dog provided her with a lot of beautiful materials. Since the little owl grew up with the sheepdog, it learned a lot of dog behavior from the sheepdog. For example, when the woman was eating, the owl would lie down at the table like this shepherd and stare at her. When the flowers bloomed in spring, this little owl preferred to stand on a beautiful branch. The mischievous collie would bite the branch on which the little owl was standing, leaving the little owl teetering. But the little owl wasn't scared off, because it knew the collie was just joking with it. Sometimes the collie and the little owl looked face to face, as if talking to each other about where to play later. Although they belonged to different races, they had a more wonderful kinship that transcended race. Not all communication requires language in order to be expressed. The inseparable bond between this collie and this little owl has nothing to do with language or race. Just because they have built up trust in each other over a long period of time, the collie loves the owl like a child, and the owl depends on the collie as a- Put the dog in the cage where the lion was kept and the next miraculous event that happened shocked the whole world. In a city in southern Oklahoma there was a bizarre zoo, the zoo was one of the world's most bizarre places. The story began in a desolate prairie where a lioness gave birth to a lion cub, but it was not happy about the smooth delivery. Because the lioness found the cub in a very bad state after it was born, the nature of wild animals made the lioness decide to abandon the cub. Unfortunately, the lion cub did suffer from congenital osteoporosis, 
which meant that its bones were very weak and would not be as strong as other lions as it grew up. Although there was no direct benefit to humans in caring for the weak, humans still tried to use compassion and the resources at their disposal to help others whenever possible. But animals naturally admired strong ones, and they tended to hunt or abandon the weaker animals, and lions were no exception. In fact, due to constant evolution, lions were recognized by nature as the strongest top predators among animals. The mother lion made a very difficult decision, but it also thought it was a very kind one. The zoo staff, however, disagreed with the lioness and considered the lion cub to be very poor. They took in the poor lion cub, but also found that the cub was not only physically weak, but also traumatized by its mother's abandonment. Recent psychological studies had shown how important it was for a newborn to develop a sense of attachment to his caregiver. If newborns did not have this experience in their early development, they would be enveloped in its negative effects for the rest of their lives. This research was not only reflected in human development, but also in animals. The zoo staff was aware of this information. And they knew that this lion cub was in desperate need of a parental role. Letting another lion take care of the cub seemed like a better option, but none of the zoo's lions were suitable for this role. They were either too young or already had enough children to care for. The zoo named the lion cub Bundig, and the cub was placed in an enclosure of its own to ensure it had plenty of room to play and grow up. Looking at the tiny Bundig, the staff had a new plan. There was a sausage dog at the zoo named Milo, a dog that didn't belong to anyone. But it was willing to provide emotional support to anyone if they needed. Although it was common knowledge that dogs and felines did not get along well, this dog did not have a belligerent personality. On the contrary, it was very kind and willing to help anyone. Based on this, the staff also believed that this dog was the best one to accompany the lion cub. Although in most people's view this approach was not reasonable, the staff still thought this bold plan was feasible. Because after considering all the risks and consequences, they could not find a better solution. It did prove to be the right choice. The staff took the sausage dog to the lion cub's cage, where they held it in their arms and patted its butt to soothe it before placing it in the cage. Then they put the puppy in the cage and quickly locked the door. And what happened next was a shock to everyone. The staff put Milo far enough away from the door, almost to the middle of the cage. The gentle treatment of the staff made the puppy stay very docile in the cage. All the staff members stood quietly and nervously next to the cage. And they were all very curious about what kind of reaction the lion cub would have. If this plan failed, they would not only feel disappointed, but also worried about the safety of the two little animals. In the cage, Milo raised its head to observe the surroundings. Bundig had been very timid since it was born and often hid in corners, but when it heard the door of the cage was locked and a strange animal appeared in the cage, it was overcome by curiosity. It came out of the corner and cautiously approached the dog. Milo also saw something was moving in the corner, after which it saw the lion cub, about its size, coming out from the bushes. Although many animals would instinctively choose to run away when they saw a lion, Milo was very calm. It stood still and waited for the lion cub to approach it. When the lion cub got close enough, Milo began to lean in to sniff it. Bundig was astonished because it had never been so close to an animal other than its mother. When Bundig sensed that Milo was not a threat to it, it made a gesture of peace. It allowed the dog to come close to sniff it and it sniffed Milo's lower abdomen as well. After that, a dog and a feline played together. They ran and chased each other in the railing, gently pushing each other. 
Soon after these two animals became very close friends. The staff was very happy to see that their plan was working. As time went on, Milo often went to play in Boondig's cage, and it was as if it had become Milo's new home. Even as they grew older, they would often play as if they were meeting for the first time. They both got used to each other's presence. They would eat meat together, help each other clean their teeth, and sleep together. Thanks to this puppy, Bundig forgets its miserable situation when it was with the puppy and didn't feel like something was missing in its life. After years of building trust with Milo, Bundig had also gained the confidence to socialize with other animals, and Milo's two sausage dog friends got along very well with it. Although Bundig had more access to other lions or feral cats, it seemed to prefer puppy. Its mischievous and lively personality was also more like a puppy. Milo's friends were also very fond of playing with Bundig, but Bundig was very loyal to its first friend. No matter what animal appeared in its life, it could not replace Milo's place in its heart. For it. Milo was more like its family than its friends. The staff invited journalists to witness this miraculous friendship. Soon, millions of people around the world saw the video or heard the story, how a dog and a lion had an unbreakable bond. People loved the story and shared it with their friends on social media platforms. Comments were people's love for the dog, and the relief of seeing the lion out of the shadows. The story was as popular in real life as it was on the internet. And people from all over the world wanted to witness the deep bond between these two animals. So there was an attraction in this zoo for visitors to witness their friendship. Many people had never seen a cat and a dog get along peacefully before. Let alone the world's largest feline and such a small dog. Staff at the zoo also said when recalling the two animals that an 11-pound sausage dog weighing about 5 kilograms and a 500-pound lion weighing about 225 kilograms could produce a friendship between them, which was unique in the world. The story of Milo and Bundig illustrates that we cannot judge two animals as not being able to get along well because of their size and species differences and that even their feelings for each other can be deeper than they seem on the surface. Because Milo has been with Bundig during its most difficult time, and Bundig has created some of the best memories of Milo's life for it. In a wolf pack in the mountains of the Yellow Land, a white wolf fought with this leopard to protect the pack, while the other wolves did not help it. In the end, this wolf tried to crash the leopard into the valley and die with it, Fortunately, it did not die. When it returned to the wolf pack, it found that the pack had been dominated by three black wolves. These three black wolves were originally its subordinates, and at that time it was seriously injured so it was expelled by the black wolves, thus losing the status of wolf king. After that, the wolf pack was dominated by the strong black wolves, and this white wolf could only leave without any choice. Its body was covered with terrible wounds, which were left by the leopard. For this wolf, it was tough to survive the battle with this leopard. But it won, which was the supreme honor. However, the white wolf felt miserable at that time because its most trusted subordinate not only failed to save it, but also took advantage of the opportunity to seize power. The wolf was badly wounded, and without the help of the pack, so it could not catch its prey and would die soon. It walked down the valley alone and headed for the river in despair. When it reached the river, it took a few sips of the water, but felt very bitter. The river was brackish, and after flowing through a saline area, the whole river became bitter and unpalatable. However, the river supported all the creatures of the mountains. It was very difficult for wild animals to survive there, and competition was fierce and food was very precious. To the wolf, the smallest wound was fatal. 
After resting by the river for a while, the wolf stood up and looked around. It found wild pigeons on the edge of a cliff not far from the valley. It thought that it might be a pigeon's nest, so it slowly walked over. The hole was relatively low, and it climbed in with great difficulty. The cave was very wide and the highest point was a few meters. There were many small caves at the top of the cave, which were the nests of the pigeons. When the wolf appeared, the pigeons were scared and flew everywhere. But they flew back soon afterwards. The pigeons flew high, even in the caves, so the wolf could not catch them. The wolf didn't want to hurt the pigeons, but just wanted to rest. The wolf lay quietly on the ground, its wounds already beginning to solidify and scar. It didn't care about the wound because hunger had exhausted it, and it could only wait quietly for death. The next morning, the wolf was lying motionless on the ground, unable to even raise its head. It was huddled up, not as energetic as before. At that time, there seemed to be movement at the entrance of the cave. The faint sound of white saline on the land being crushed came and grew closer. The wolf had no strength, but it was still alert. It thought that if it was a wild animal, it was powerless to resist. It opened its eyes and looked warily at the entrance of the cave, but the sound was getting closer and closer. However, the sound of footsteps became lighter, and then suddenly stopped. The wolf concluded that it was an experienced beast, so it did not make a sound, but huddled quietly. To it, even a fox could kill it. Gradually, the sun rose and the river bank received the earliest rays of sunlight. The sun shone in through the hole, and woke up the roosting pigeons like an alarm clock. The pigeons cooed and flapped their wings in search of food. After a noise, the pigeons went to work. They flew towards the entrance of the cave, which was small and crowded with dozens of pigeons. Suddenly there was a confusion at the entrance of the cave and the pigeons flew everywhere. An animal the size of a wolf swooped in. It was very nimble and had a very clear target. It grabbed a pigeon with its paws, and then jumped up and bit a panicked pigeon. In an instant, all the other pigeons flew away, and the beast caught two of them. It contentedly lay down on the ground to enjoy its meal. It quickly plucked the pigeon's hair, and made a sound that looked very delicious. This wolf looked at it in amazement, surprised by the speed of its eating. But the scent of the pigeon attracted it even more. As it had not eaten for several days, the wolf's stomach made a rumbling sound. The sudden sound startled the beast, which jumped up and looked around before it found the carrying wolf on the ground. At that moment it panicked and tried to escape, but it noticed that something was wrong with the wolf. Finding the wolf weak, it turned around and let out a low growl, and displayed a fierce look. However, it soon became clear that the wolf was injured, and posed no threat to it. It continued to lie on the ground to enjoy the food, and the wolf saw clearly that it was a dog. Before, the wolf was not afraid of the dog at all. However, at that time, it knew that it could not fight against the dog. The dog was about to eat the second pigeon, when it suddenly stopped. In fact, it had been watching the wolf. The wolf was covered with wounds and unable to hunt, and seemed to be too hungry to stand up. The dog slowly stood up with the pigeon in its mouth, and after a moment of hesitation, it slowly approached the wolf. The wolf let out a low growl, and tried to stop the dog from approaching, not wanting to be bitten to death by the dog. The dog stopped and threw the pigeon hard to the wolf's side and left. The wolf was surprised, but hunger made it too late to think, so it enjoyed the pigeon. After that, the dog brought some food from time to time, including rabbits and groundhogs and other prey. Under the dog's care, the wolf actually survived. It gradually recovered, and lived with the dog in a pigeon hole, in the mountains away from the wolves. Soon after, the dog became pregnant. The wolf was a good hunter, and was able to catch enough prey. One morning, however, the wolf smelled the leopard near the pigeon hole and was instantly alert. 
It had fought with the leopard, so it knew it was scary. It decided to take the dog back to the wolf pack. It spent those days hunting with all its might, making sure it had enough to eat, have enough strength to get back. It knew it would be hard, and then it set out on its way back. It took the dog along the road it knew and came to the wolf pack's habitat, hiding the dog behind a rock. The wolf stood at the top of the mountain and let out a loud howl, a symbol of power and strength and the ability to summon the pack. The sudden sound instantly startled the wolves. The three black wolves were instantly startled by the howl that was familiar to them and belonged to the wolf. They were once dominated by this howl. The last time they heard it, they chose to ignore it, which led to the wolf being seriously injured and expelled. And they heard that howl again, thick and strong. They felt afraid, and after that they looked up and saw the wolf. These three black wolves were afraid, but they would not easily give up their position as the wolf king. The battle was about to begin. Then the wolf fought with the three black wolves, and regained the position of the wolf king. Then the wolf and the dog gave birth to nine pups. Although only one cub survived, it turned into a powerful mastiff. And another legendary ass are very friendly to human pups. Most dogs are naturally mild-tempered. Compared to humans they can always bear a lot, and many owners are willing to let dogs and human pups play together, because if a dog has a good temperament, it will not hurt the child. Why can dogs be so inclusive of children? First of all, because the human pups smell milder, the dog knows that the human pups are very innocent and will not pose a threat to it, so they will hardly guard against the human pups and will be very good to the human pups. There is also because the child is more vulnerable, dogs are generally pack animals, they are born with the nature of taking care of the weak. For dogs, human pups is their younger siblings, it deserves to take on the responsibility of a big brother. Just like this little girl being taken care of by the dogs, what kind of story is this? Here we can take a look, the story took place in Ukraine. The main character of the story is a lost little girl and some stray dogs. This day, the little girl and her parents got separated and she could not find her family when it was dark. Looking at the slowly darkening sky, the little girl felt an unprecedented fear, and the weak girl could only cower in the corner and cry silently. In the darkness of the night, nothing could be seen which made the original timid little girl even more afraid. And because of the fear she did not dare to cry out loud, she has been sobbing. Just when the little girl was at a loss, she spotted a few pairs of shining eyes in the darkness. Seeing the glowing objects, the little girl seemed to see hope in the night, so she walked towards those eyes, she walked over to see that it was several stray dogs. The dogs that saw the little girl did not attack her, but just watched her silently. The little girl saw these guys did not fear, but took the initiative to approach them, naively touched them with her hands, the dogs also did not resist, and let her pet themselves. Not long after the little girl passed out because of physical exhaustion, the dogs did not leave. And had been guarding her side because of the lost, the little girl did not eat for a long time, when she woke up, the dog brought her a bag, she opened it and there was a lot of leftovers. Because of the hunger, the little girl could not care much. So she grabbed the food in the bag and ate it. Later, the little girl was brought back to their own wandering den by the dogs, and the little girl thus lived with several dogs. The dogs would find food for the little girl to enjoy together every day. And gradually the girl was integrated into their team. They went through the garbage cans together to find food during the day, and went back to the dog's den to sleep together at night. Sometimes the den was not habitable, they would find a new corner to sleep. The dogs were very kind to the little girl and would give her food at once when they found it, and would only ate when she was full. Because of the colder weather, 
The dogs would snuggle close to the girl's body every time she slept to keep her warm and keep her from freezing. Despite the very cold weather, the little girl slept very well every day under the protection of the dogs. They spread the ragged clothes they found on the floor and snuggled close together every night. Although the days of wandering were very hard, the little girl felt warm and happy with the company of the dogs. I in this way the girl and the dogs spent countless days and nights, dependent on each other, like a family, such days lasted a long time. One day when the little girl went through the garbage can alarm the family. The family rushed out to check, the next scene made people shocked. There is a dirty little girl followed by several dogs, they had never seen this scene before. The family rushed to call the police, when the police arrived, there was only the little girl left. The dogs had long disappeared. But they did not know that the dogs actually did not leave, but in the corner silently watching everything that happened around the little girl, the girl was taken to the police station to verify her identity. The police informed her family to pick her up. The family were very happy to find the girl. Because the girl had been wandering for a long time, the family did not feel comfortable, so they took the girl to the medical examination. The doctor told the girl's family. The girl's vital signs were all normal, and did not cause malnutrition because of long-term wandering, which made the family very surprised. How did the girl survive and not have any problems at all, and so the girl returned to her normal human life. But she never forgot the big guys and was very grateful for them. She was very eager to see her friends. But what she did not know was that the dogs were actually always there, and she was taken to the police station and the dogs followed her. Because the little girl was lost. The family did not feel comfortable with her out to play again, so she had not been allowed to come out, so the dogs did not have the opportunity to see the girl point one day when her family were not paying attention, the girl quietly ran outside, hoping to find the dogs again. Sure enough, she finally met the dogs waiting for the girl in front of her house. As soon as the dogs saw the girl, they surrounded her and licked her very enthusiastically to express their thoughts. From then on, the girl often quietly out to meet the dogs. And each time she brought them good food, each time they played together, and each time the dogs would send the girl to the door, seeing the girl safely to home, and then they would leave. Such a friendship is really very touching. They just got along very well for many years and stayed with each other as usual. The girl is very lucky, but not every child is so lucky, I hope parents can watch their children when they go out to play, do not let the children leave their sight range. Always pay attention to the movement of children to prevent children from getting lost that IT is not an exaggeration to say that dogs are humans best friend, so many people keep them as pets. Miraculously, several dogs in this family have their own pet, which is a calf. It's not a pet to be exact, but a brother they take care of together. This day the owner brought a little one back home, which is a premature calf. This calf has a very miserable life, it was just born and lost its mother. Which was found by the owner who decided to bring it home. Because the calf was born prematurely, so it was very weak. He needed to pay attention to its dynamics all the time, so he set aside a room for the calf alone, facing the sudden arrival of the calf. The owner's five dogs were very curious. The owner did not expect them to take care of the little guy, they had nothing to do the whole day but walked around the baby cow, took it together to eat and played together with it. When the calf grew up, it did not take the initiative to live outside, and its behavior also showed the characteristics of a dog. Both the calf and the dog enjoyed their lives very much. Time passed quickly, the calf grew up a lot and recovered well. And the dogs became inseparable friends with the calf. The funniest thing was that the calf lived with the dogs all day long, 
and as a result it also thought it is a dog, it turned from the quiet at the beginning to lively and cheerful as the dogs. And it took several dogs as its friends, after arriving at the new home, the calf had hardly had any contact with its own kind, which led it to think it was a dog. The calf not only pampered, but also licked its owner like a dog. So it's true that the perception of itself was still skewed after spending time with dogs. Although it is a cow, but all kinds of behavior was very similar to the dog, this guy really thought itself as dogs. The calf was led astray. The husky in owner's house liked to run in the grass, it now also liked to run in the yard, and then played with the dogs under the owner's care, it has become bigger than the dogs, but it has never hurt the dogs when they played together. It is said that dogs have a high IQ. But I did not expect the calf to be as smart as the dogs. The owner is very pleased to see several little ones and hopes that their family can be happy like this all the time.